Welcome to SBCA's Lumber Connection Podcast, where we discuss today's market and explore tomorrow's trends. Here's our host, Molly Butts. Hello and welcome to Lumber Connection. It's the week of May 16th, 2022, and I'm back in the studio with my regular experts, Justin Binning and Ken Timmons. Both Justin and Ken are from American International Forest Products, or AIFP. Welcome back to the podcast, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Molly. Hey, Molly. How are you? Welcome back from the uh, OQM. Well, thank you. Yes, I am. I'm freshly back from SBCA's most recent open quarterly meeting in Williamsburg, Virginia. Really pretty location right on the James River. And actually a really good turnout, too. We had a great, uh, actually, our podcast came up several times over the course of the last uh, three days. And just a quick shout out to everybody that was there and people that commented and gave us feedback. We really appreciate all of our listeners. Absolutely. So they're really here to hear you. That's what I'm, that's what I learned this week. (laughs) Not that they don't like you too, but they're here to hear you. So I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. After a little bit of light reading this week, it looks like housing starts are actually down for the first time in a few months. And as everyone's probably aware, interest rates went up another little bit. I was reading that shipping delays continue to be a bit of a thorn in the proverbial side. So with those things in mind, I'll turn this over to you to give us an update on the lumber market over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I was going to say too, On the uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to attend. We're excited for Boston, but the feedback that, that we were receiving, I know you mentioned was over, overwhelmingly positive. And that means a lot to to all of us knowing that we're we're bringing some value. I guess it'd be really bad feedback. You know, if we got bad feedback, we're you know, yeah. given bad information. So I'm glad that folks are finding this useful and yeah, that makes us happy and definitely worth, you know, worth us doing this and I'm glad. We really appreciate it. You know, the one thing that our listeners may not really know or understand is that you guys volunteer for this and that this is something that, you know, you and your company have you know agreed to give SBCA as part of something that is valuable to the industry. So it, I agree with you. It's really great to hear that it is. And you know, just to reiterate how much we appreciate your time when you do this with us too. So great Absolutely. stuff. Well, and it makes it worth it when we get to connect with people at OQMs or BCMCs or, you know, someone says, Hey, you're that, and someone hears me ordering a hot dog at the Red Sox game and goes, wait, I recognize that voice. And, you know, you get to turn around and meet someone, learn about who they are and maybe get to do some business one-on-one. So it's all, you know, it's, it's a blessing. On the hot dog, do the Polish or regular All-American? Because of the setting, I want to say the regular All-American, but like, but I Polish for yeah, sure. I gonna say, I'm going to, I'm going to, lo- I'm going to load it up <laughs> to capacity. We're going to, we're going to maximize footage on that. Proud pack. mustard guy or? I'm a mustard ketchup guy. Okay. Even maybe relish only in the ballpark. Right. You've never seen me do that at home. Sorry about that folks. Well, so, yeah. this is actually interesting because what will at some point promote is that the three of us got to be the guest on another podcast recently, which isn't posted yet. So once it is, we'll certainly let everyone know. But there were lots of food analogies in that podcast as well. And I learned something that I didn't know before about a donut eating contest. So this is appropriate. Maybe we need a hot dog eating contest at the Red Sox game in Boston. Sounds expensive. (laughs) These things are going 12, 15 bucks a pop. All I can say is I wouldn't go head to head with you, Ken. Yeah. So um, kind of, you know, where we left off a couple of weeks ago, I think that, um, not a lot of downward pressure really across all species, really all items. Some gaining a little bit more momentum, more momentum than others over the past couple of weeks. I think the biggest thing is just the approach to the market from a buyer standpoint and how they're approaching. We've talked about this for some time now in terms of inventory management and a shorter cycle. So the inventory levels in the field really, uh, based on what I've physically seen and when I talked about my customers are not deep, you know, they don't have a, a, a deep level of inventory that they're working through. And that's really been by design for the most part. What we're seeing here is like, you know, housing starts, you mentioned a little bit down still in my view, that's a very positive number, right? It's a big number and it's, yeah. it's showing that the business is out there and business is still getting done. The, the concern comes in the latter half of the year and a lot of these headwinds that we've talked about that we're facing. And so that's obviously a concern, but business right now is great. And I, and it really feels like there's wood that has to get bought, but people are just approaching the buy differently there. It's very much feels more of a just in time kind of purchase model. There's no fear of not being able to get wood, which we've all known what that's felt like. There, there is no fear right now. We've talked about product production, the efficiency of production and 
how it feels like supply and demand are relatively in balance. You could say that supply is slightly outweighing the current takeaway right now. And we're okay. seeing that in the current retraction in pricing. I do think we'll have a bigger event over the next four week period and bigger event, meaning there's going to be a sizable buy. We've got the, the holiday weekend coming up here in a couple of weeks. You could make the case that we might see some action around there, or it could very well go into the middle half of, but I do think you're going to see in that June timeframe, June 1st, I think you're going to see a little more orders coming into the system with some folks really feeling comfortable about the price levels that they're seeing. We see the price levels that have been established in Pine. Those are still trading a bit lower again today, but we've seen it across other species. And I think, again, just based on the still good activity that we've seen, I think we're just going to see an increase in enough to maybe swing the other way. Now, how much, how hard, you know, I, I don't know. Obviously it's hard to tell, but I think the summer is going to be kind of a fist fight. All through the summer, I, I kind of really do. Kim, what are you seeing kind of out of the, from your area? Would you agree or is it? I do. I do completely agree with the micro markets, the small climates. The summer is going to be a fist bite in the sense of some guys are going to be thinking, oh, I'm waiting. It's coming down. And other guys are going to think, no, dude, it's going back up. I mean, it's got to be very product to product, region to region. Not one statement's going to fit everybody, right? What Justin's doing in yellow pine might not fit what I'm doing in first species. You know, it's going to be yeah. in, in, in different, you know, demand markets, right? Cities around the country are going to act differently too. I mean, right now without naming names, some cities are ice cold and other cities are ripping hot. I mean, it's, <laughs> there's no, the uniformity is not going to be a, a consistency throughout the summer. I do think uh, we're going to go through periods like we just did, right? You know, three weeks ago, the market was great. Today, the market's not so great. Three weeks from now, who knows? It's, I agree with Justin. There's going to be more participation, especially on the backside of Memorial Day. I think Memorial Day is going to be very telling in some key items, right? Stud trims that predominantly might be running through home centers. I think home centers might actually be surprised by the amount of business they get here next weekend, you know, and that's going to reflect in the market. That's been a big sector that hasn't been participating in the last 60 days. As far as, you know, cord stock and web stock for, for component manufacturers, more readily available out of the West. Prices are trending downward um, and there's a lot of opportunities out there. Now that's coupled in some regions with guys not really having the excitement from their builders buying newer prices. In other regions, people are cashing in already, right? There's jobs that have been committed to months ago that finally now we're back in the profitable green level and guys want to cash out their chips and leave the casino, right? Just like if I was going to go play blackjack and I made a little bit of money, you know, what? count your blessings and get out of there before you bust it again. Same thing with the lumber market. If you're in a profitable spot, be profitable. The waters are choppy last week we were talking about sneaky strong sneaky uh week it almost feels like the last couple of weeks were you know i was about to dust off a pina colada in my inflatable raft and i got sneaker waved out a half mile from the coast <laughs> but you know it's just i i heard one trader on my floor his name is david curlin phenomenal broker he made a reference that i overheard on the phone he was telling a, a client of his very much like if you dropped a basketball from chest height right it's going to go down. It's going to bounce up. It's going to go down. It's going to bounce up right now. In general, those bounces are getting smaller and lower in general, right? Again, not everything fits every product consistently, but that will overall trend. Correct. Correct. So, you know, the summers, it's going to be different than any summer we've ever seen. And who knows, right? None of us know what's going to happen 30 days from now, whether Putin does something crazy overseas, Biden does something crazy domestically, policies change, uh, Fed changes interest rates. I mean, that's outside of our control as an industry. What is in control from our industry is making sure that we're staying on top of the business we've already committed to, locking in profits on that, and rolling up, doing what our, our business has best, rolling up the sleeves, promoting our product, explaining the value that is in component manufacturing to the building sector in the U S which is highly underbuilt and, and capturing business and making people feel comfortable because builder confidence is not rock solid right now. There's a lot of people questioning if all these millennials are going to get into homes or if they're spooked by the rate or if the price is too high or 
you know, whatever it might be. And I think we have a, a platform as an industry to promote some ease, some confidence, you know, it's, it, this is not the first time in the lumber market or the U S financial markets that things have been a little weird, right? And weird is okay. It's not, you know, Justin and I are recording from Portland, Oregon, and that's the motto, I guess. Not that either of us hold on to that super tightly, but you know, it's, it will be okay. And I see our business flourishing over the next five years. Well, some of what we're talking about here, you know, again, we go back to the word sneaky, choppy. I won't say the one we don't like. And one of the things that we were talking about before we came on the air was just sort of you guys, again, spending some time with me to explain some of the things that are going on. And we use numbers when we're talking offline just because we can. So I won't do that here. But one of the things that we've talked about a lot is the new normal. And I think, you know, what I finally ended up saying to you guys is, I don't think there's going to ever be a new normal. The new normal is that there is no new normal with regard to price, right? Like that's going to continue to be a basketball bounce. The new normal is really more about the buying strategy behind the price or in front of the price or right next to the price, depending on the week. So it seems like that's where we can spend some more time internally educating the people listening to our podcast with regard to how to do that successfully. And then that becomes part of the education that you're talking about with regard to builder confidence, right? Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think we're both sides of the question, I guess. It's hard to, it's hard to say still, I think over the last two and a half years, so much has changed that like the new normal, like we just got to get rid of that. Like it's, we're in a space that of still unknown and a lot of volatility still, right? Like we still have a lot of unknown, a lot of volatility, a lot of emotion still in the trade, but you know, the days of, you know, where it felt like someone that would keep a minimal inventory was 90 days. And I know Ken touched on this, like you had guys that buy six months or a year and support the stuff at one time based on that. And it's doesn't feel like that at all. Now, if somebody has 60 or 90 days, it's like, whoa, <laughs> you know, that's like talking about their business and getting into more of a full disclosure mode with the customer. And you hear something like that and it, that's abnormal. It feels like nowadays where 30 to 45 days feels normal. Here's my food analogy for the week. A couple of years back, people would be filling their fridge with groceries and they had a chest freezer in the garage with half a cow that they split with their brother, right? <laughs> And they yeah. got all the meat they need. A lot of people deal. are doing that now. I know. Right. I kinda, if, if any of our listeners want to go in on a cow, <laughs> I'll call me. You're um, all in. Okay. But now it's more like everyone got rid of the Kenmore fridge and we've got a little mini fridge that should be in a door room, you know, for the family of five to eat out. Of. It's just a different style. It's more routine, right? You don't do your Costco run once a month or, or twice a month. You're going to the grocery store three times a week now. Because the prices are so crazy. Sometimes you might go to the store just to check the prices, get a, a York peppermint patty and be on your way. Oh, good call on peppermint patty you know, though. Yeah. I'm kind of craving some jugs out of the deli personally. I don't know if that term spans the whole country. I apologize if that's just. I don't think so. Cause I don't know what you're talking about. One of Joe's like uh, no. potato wedges, spuds. Oh, <laughs> no. Nope. I mean, I, nope. <laughs> well, well. Any any of our listeners who want to come to Portland, will go out for JoJo's on me. It's just different. And you're completely right, Molly. It's not, uh, the new normal is not a measurement of price. It's almost a measurement of sweatiness, right? Like I'm a bigger guy out here in the Northwest and it's often cool. It's 40, 40 to 50 degrees. I call that big guy front. Okay. <laughs> when I go to Las Vegas or I go on vacation to Mexico, I am often putting deodorant on the backs of my knees, right? I am cruising at a work? sweaty level. No, but you know, it okay. makes me feel better. And right. uh, I just think the market is like that, right? Like the new normal is us being comfortable having some sweat around the ring of our t-shirt, right? It's just yep. the, the ecosystem we live in has changed and that is going to stay for a little while. The discomfort is the comfort. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, and we've been talking about just in time for a while, but I guess that would be the next question. You know, if I'm still reading, and obviously this isn't something that's going to change overnight and then probably get worse before it gets better, but, you know, transportation continues to be difficult. So how does that equate with the just-in-time lumber purchase? Because, I mean, prompt wood isn't a thing from based on what you guys have said. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we can help people sort of find that sweet spot of they can order and still get it in time, but not have to keep all of the inventory necessarily. Yeah, it's a tough one. Transportation's horrible. 
I mean, I, I was just getting off the phone here before we started a call on uh, a small series of trucks that are going on 30 days late and the oh. woods have been ready. I and mean, I've got the sawmill working on trucks. I've got my team working on trucks, both of which are phenomenal transportation teams. And there's just no easy solution. And the customers complaining rightfully so as they should, because, you know, there was a commitment to get that wood to the job site at a certain time, you know, and the customers starting to get a little angry with it. And I said, all right, well, if you'd like, you know, it's not our style to cancel orders, but if you want to back out of these, be my guest. And they immediately stopped because even though the price of wood has come down and prompt wood, i.e. wood produced sitting on the yard at the sawmill is available for sale, hmm. moving it is still a huge issue. I mean, if that person wanted to cancel and order new stuff, they could be out another three weeks potentially. Right. So I think prompt is two weeks at best, unless you're driving your own truck in the middle of the night, you know, and mm -hmm. bottom line, nothing's changed. It's only getting yeah. Better arguably worse, but, um, I'd say it's, I'd say it's worse with other springtime, other products, agricultural products coming on. Like there's, yes, less, there's yes, you, you feel that you, you feel it shift to your point, right. Through do different geographical sections throughout the U S but the car has been car issues have been, you know, we talked about Western Canada for so long and the issues there and, and obviously out of the East too, but here in the States, I mean, it's a big problem in the South too, with rail cars, you know, mills that would be you know, typically getting 25 to 30 cars allocated to them at a singular sawmill, they're getting two or three if they're lucky. Yeah. Um, and so material still needs to move, but if you've got a, a rate of, you know, we'll just say that the rate triples when you've got to haul it on truck from location to location based off of freight versus truck or excuse rail versus truck, excuse me. So. That's not good. But the other thing that's not good is, you know, we talk about gas prices and we're all in shock and awe. Obviously when we fill up our trucks or vehicles, or if you plug it in your Prius, you're, you're genius. I don't think we've seen, we're just getting, you know, there's an article in Newsmax, I believe it was yesterday that said, we've got a very good chance of price exceeding $10 a gallon. I know what it cost me to fill up my truck yesterday at five sixty nine a gallon. Yeah. I, you know, I, can do basic math. I am a lumber broker, and that, but there's a very good chance. I mean, we're already seeing up Northwest in Washington. They're running out of gas um, at gas stations, right? Oh. In major community areas in the cities, they're reprogramming their stations to be able to handle double digits. You only do that for one reason. If maybe the boss somewhere along the line says, "Hey, this was what's coming." There's supply shortages, fuel, right? And that's a real deal. And so, yeah, we talk about transportation now. I mean, again, there's Oof. no magic in numbers. That logistical problem, and as I've said in weeks past, it's not going anywhere. It's here to stay. It's going to get worse. Know that and act accordingly. But it's a serious issue. It's, again, it's, it really feels like it's just going to get worse. Yeah. All right. Well, these are clearly going to be some potentially challenging times ahead of us for many reasons. And with that in mind, it seems like I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Just... What are some of your best tips before we wrap up today for the next couple of weeks before we can meet again and mull it all over? Go fill your tank before it keeps going up. That's number one. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> yeah, man. Trying to think outside the box, besides the typical, get in touch with your suppliers, make sure you have a plan, buy your sales guys Red Bull. I would and say maybe plan. think creatively. Be prepared to change the plan that has worked for the last 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. That's... Maybe it will continue to work and I hope it does, but don't be shocked if maybe you got to start playing differently, right? If you're a elbow jump shot guy, that's your shot all day, every day. No one can guard it. You're the best guy ever. The market's now going to find a way to guard that shot. The, the, the defense has changed almost. And I think working on your elbow shot and your drive to the bucket is a useful thing, right? We might, where we might've had a sweet spot with one sawmill and it's our, our go-to bread and butter and it's easy, smooth transportation and, you know, be prepared to maybe explore another mill stock as a backup or a third stock as a backup, or maybe, maybe you always have your wood delivered and maybe it's time for your business to invest in one truck, just in case you got to start picking up some last minute loads for your company. Or I would just say, be open to being innovative, be able to adapt if needed. Yeah, I think that's great. I really don't have anything to add since he kind of poo-pooed on my uh, normal thing I would say. I would say the same thing. I think it's important. I think you got to just stay close to 
you got to stay engaged in the market. And these, most of these folks have had to regardless because again, of the kind of the style of buying that's being done, but you know, there's good deals that pop up. You know, you get layered to markets, different people looking at different numbers. And I think that's one of the reasons we've seen so much hesitancy is there is more product available than there has been in a long time. And so you ask for a quote for six, get eight back and you've got, you know, different price levels all over the place. So that, that can be unnerving. Right. And so even more so than ever, like you gotta be tied in with the people you trust and that are actually going to take care of you and get you product when you're going to need it. So, but I thought Ken was great with his advice. And one thing I would say too, it's, you know, obviously we talk about pine a lot, but pine continues to grow and move and kind of spread its wings as that production base continues to climb billions of board feet, 5.5 billion added in, in just the last few years and expected to jump another, I think almost 10 billion feet, if my memory serves me correct, over the next decade, that's the future. And so if you've been a pine hater and you and you don't use it because your granddaddy didn't use it, dad didn't use it, times have changed to Ken's point. Like you've got to be able to understand that the sooner you kind of transition to a product that's going to be more readily available and, and spreading, there's no more growing production base out of the West. There's no more growing production base out of the Western Canada or Eastern, maybe at least very minimally, but it's kind of the future. And so take note of that um, because your competition is, and you to be able to stay competitive in today's marketplace, you've got to be able to be nimble in the trade and get set up to use the products that are going to be available to you at a consistent, consistently, and that are going to be the most affordable, which ultimately, hopefully turns into profitability for your company. You know, <clears throat> I realize that these all come from a, a place of Maybe potential frustration or, yeah, just unknown. Let's say that rather than frustration. But I think you guys have, have put some pretty good things on the table today. I mean, aside from the usual, which always should apply, which is to stay close to the people you trust. I think, you know, the idea that you need to kind of plan to get uncomfortable and plan to think outside the box are excellent advice because it can be easy to try and do things the way we've always done them. But now is the time to try something new. Well, and while you have, like we were forced in comfortability before. Right. Like you didn't have a choice because we're yeah. just in battle mode or we're, we're trying to make it happen. And now it's kind of regroup mode. Um, and it's how do we better prepare ourselves for a battle again, knowing what yep. we learned from this you know, project for the last two and a half years. I like that. All right. Well, I think with that wraps up our episode for this week. Ken and Justin, I really appreciate you for your continued expertise and enthusiasm. As always, I enjoy our time together. And I look forward to the next installment of Lumber Connection. Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Molly. Talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. This has been a Lumber Connection podcast by SBCA. If you have a question you'd like a guest to answer on a future podcast, send it to podcast at sbcacomponents.com.